Alright, what are we doing today? We're replacing oxygen sensors. Yeah, which ones? The front ones. The front ones. <laughs> the front oxygen sensors on a Mustang GT 2003. These are also known as pre-cat, which means they go before the catalytic converter. They are also known as upstream, bank one or two, sensor one, before cat, manifold, lots of different names to confuse you, but basically they go at the front. And I'll show you where they are. It's probably the most awkward thing to get to, unless your engine is not in the car, then it's a lot easier. Right there, look. Look at that, a little... Yeah, a little white plug with the black wire coming out of it, that is it. You'll need a 22 millimeter, or you can have a bash with a 7 8 inch, although I wouldn't recommend I'd get the 22 millimeter. And the top of the black wire, you can see the little wire runs up there, you just need a little flat head, and pop that right out. But there is not much room to work with. That's why I'm going under. Exactly, <laughs> you can try the other side. But again, a very narrow slot, so this is the passenger side, as known as the off side. However, the driver's side, there it is, I get that one. A lot easier to get to, a lot more room. Uh, that's why I've actually already loosened that one. <laughs> uh, we got a bit of corrosion on this one, which means you might need a, a little blowtorch just to loosen that up. Uh, you can get that from a Harbour Freight. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing now. We're going to take these off. Uh, the downstream ones, which is after cat, the sensor twos, they are right here. I've cleaned them up, you see? Yeah, the blue and purple. I don't know why we have blue and purple, but there you go. So, the same ooh, rule applies with these. You got a little, little flat head, uh, a little flat head in this gap here, and push down this little tab with your finger. It comes right up. And uh, yeah, there's your 22 millimeter there. Uh, it just takes readings from your exhaust. Uh, there's your cat, look, this little box. Um, yeah, it takes readings. Uh, we'll go into that in more detail. That's essentially what it is. Uh, the rear ones don't affect drivability, the front ones do. So if your front ones throw an error code, you better go sort those out because they cause lean and rich conditions which means more air, air to fuel ratio, or, or the opposite. Ha! <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, there we go. Alright, before doing any work on anything electric, remove the negative terminal. You know what, you might be fine, honestly, but uh, it's, it's, it takes two seconds to do, but I would wrap it up, leave it there, put it back when you're done. Okay, so if you don't fancy getting the uh, little gas burner on those hard to uh, remove ones, you can also give this little tool a try. It's an oxygen sensor removal tool. You can rent it from Pep Boys for absolutely nothing, which is pretty cool. Um, they're all 7 8 inch. Uh, you can see down here, 22 mil. You can pretty much just slip that, uh, that over your sensor. Uh, to get it off, you get a bit of extra leverage in those tight to reach spaces and also extra bit of torque. There's a star shaped one, a uh, standard socket one, and also a slightly different one here. It pretty much just allows the wire to slip through a crack in the side there, which allows you to get a socket all the way on there, and then you just slip your socket through there remove it that way. That's all it is. If you have a standard socket and you have some tools to cut a hole in the side, go ahead. Uh, if that's accessible to you, it might be a lot easier. Okay, we've pulled the driver's side one. You can see it there, it looks Dirty. nice and saucy. Yeah, I all turn it a bit there. Yeah, so it's a good idea to check that your, uh, your new one is of similar shape and size before you try and get it off. It's, kind of an oily job, uh, yeah, so, yeah, essentially, a sensor produces a voltage that changes when the amount of unburned oxygen in the exhaust changes. 
and if that ratio uh, leans a bit too much from a ratio of 14.7 to 1 you will throw an engine light which is probably why you're here trying to do this in the first place because you're trying to make that engine light go away <laughs> and usually That's nine times out of ten it is a problem with the sensor if you have an oil leak, uh, it can erode a lot of the sensitive wirings and electronics and things. Uh, and also they just fail over time. It's just one of those things. So here we go. We're going to try and put the new one on and have fun with that. You ready? Yep. All right, so uh, we're going in behind the engine. Behind, behind. You see this hand here? <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, that hand. You see that green thing? Yeah, that's what it's got to go into. <laughs> That's a nightmare, huh? It's very tight. Yeah, unless you want to take the whole engine block out, you bastard. Okay, uh, while the wife is zip tying the uh, sensors okay. there, the uh, it's a little bit longer than the stock one, so uh, comes with a zip tie. Don't forget to uh, put some anti seize on the threading as well. That exhaust is probably the, the hottest component in a car. So the last thing you want to do is that to seize up, and then you will need to invest in a blowtorch. Now, sensors and banks. Oh, what is a sensor? What is a bank, huh? Well, sensor one upstream before the cat is all at the front. Sensor two downstream post cat, downtown, whatever you want to call it. That is uh, sensor two. Now, bank one and two. Oh, what is that, right? So, if you get a check engine light, oh, bank one, sensor one. Well, bank one is the side. Uh, <laughs> okay, if you look at your engine, you got these little spark plugs right here, the cylinders. Yeah, this is a V8, so there's eight of them. Uh, we've replaced ours with yellow, so you can easily see. You will notice they're not perfectly uh, in line. One side is always more forward than the other one. So you can see this cylinder one is right here because it's furthest forward on the car. Uh, you can see the other side, it's slightly further behind, so it's just like a zigzag like this. Bank one is the side where the number one cylinder is furthest forward. So it's not about driver or passenger. This is bank one because this cylinder is furthest forward of the car. So if you have a check engine like bank one sensor one, bank one sensor one is this side. And on this car, it's the driver's side. And that is the error code we're getting. Uh, however, it was slightly cheaper to buy a pair of sensors. And with this car, um, they fit all four of them, so I figured I'd buy a pair and do both of them. Which I'm kind of regretting because the passenger side is really hard to replace, but we'll get it done. So that's banks and sensors. Okay, we've got a resident zip tire on, on the job on the job right here. Okay, uh, a little factlet. Uh, if your front O2 sensors fail, either one of them, uh, your ECU, which is your onboard computer, engine control unit, I believe, uh, that will actually guess, uh, have a good stab at guessing uh, the fuel to air mixture ratio. It's pretty good at that. Uh, it's, not, it's not great because uh, sometimes the car might run too lean or too rich. Now, if one of your front O2 sensors is on the fritz or broken or however you want to say, uh, mileage, engine performance, emissions and damage to the catalytic converter are all affected because there is no input or guessing a rough fuel to air ratio uh, by the ECU to regulate the fuel mixture. Yeah. If your rear ones are on the way out, drivability is not effective. However, it will throw a code to let you know you will fail your emissions or smoke check. So, rear ones, yeah, get them replaced sometime before you smoke check. Uh, front ones, Get that sorted as soon as possible.